course with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship a high. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... <coughs> He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Late that night in the Smoke Hills, the Lone Ranger and Toto were riding to a campsite when the masked man, peering upward into the distance, stopped. Oh, 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 oh. Look at the sky, Toto. Near the ridge. Uh, sky, plenty red. Look like fire. Maybe forest fire. Toto, listen. You hear that? Kimisabe. That bad. Sound come from drums. Drum sound for war dance. War dance, Toto. But all the tribes are at peace now. Oh, them play for war dance. Redden sky from fire that go with dance. Come on, Toto. We better ride to where they're gathered. We must learn what's going on there. Monsieur, we... up, scout. <laughs> and Tonto had ridden to the top of the ridge. He said it now. They dismounted and walked through the brush to a spot where they could look down on the startlingly vivid scene below. An Indian camp was spread out before them. And at the end of the encampment, a giant bonfire blazed. Indians in glistening grease and war paint danced in a frenzy around the fire, while a seemingly endless circle of tribesmen encouraged them with chants and yells as the drums increased in fury. You see, Kimosabe, them make war dance. Dance mean, them attack soon. Those men in the green and white paint, but they belong to the tribe of Big Moose Bear? Yes, Kimosabe. This is very grave, Tonto. His is the tribe that has arranged to sell a part of its territory to the government. Why should they suddenly prepare for war? Oh, me not know, Kimosabe. Then we'll have to know, Tonto. There must be more than a thousand Indians. Many more. You should be able to make your way down there and join the circle around the dancers. Uh, me fix some clothes and face. Good. Learn what has caused this to happen and who it is they intend to attack. I'll wait here until you return. And me go, Kimasari. The first traces of dawn were streaking the eastern sky when Toto returned to the Lone Ranger. It's plenty bad, Kimasari. Them get ready, attack wagon train this morning. Me learn that and where them attack. What wagon train is that, Tonto? Do you know? Wagon train come with soldiers. Chiefs say soldiers bring 
Many guns kill Indian. That couldn't be true, Tonto. Someone has lied to them. A thousand, two thousand Indian ride from Eagle Rock. Kill soldiers and people in wagon train when them pass. We must prevent this. Tonto, you know the back roads to Fort Shannon? Yes, Kimasabe. Oh, it's half-day ride, Fort Shannon. Even when we take back trail. Yes, I know. But you're going there. Here, take this silver bullet to Colonel Thomas. Huh? Tell him what you've learned. What you do, Kimasabe? I'm going to ride out along the trail from Eagle Rock. And stop the wagon train from passing there. If I can lead it to the old bunkhouse, perhaps we'll have a chance to hold off the Indians till you bring help. It's a long chance, yet we'll have to take it. Me go then, Kimasabe. Easy, scout. Easy. Get him up, scout! Easy, steady, big fellow. Silver, old fellow, we have a big job on our hands. Come on, Silver! Wagon train from Independence passed through the prairie country onto the trail that would take it past Eagle Rock and the Smoke Hills. The troop of cavalry riding with the covered wagons and the single stagecoach slowed to a stop as five riders came galloping from the opposite direction, signaling a halt. Hey, Tex, it's the advance guard, the four of them. Another fella, not a soldier. What's this all about? Galloping back just when he was beginning to make time. Tex, look at that hombre with the soldiers. Oh, God, he's wearing a mask. It's a nice horse he's got. Oh, 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 oh. Tex, where's Captain Mumbler? Oh, oh, easy, boy. Here I am, Cobra, what's wrong? Who is this man? Well, he says Let me handle this, will you please, Corporal? Captain Mumford's eyes narrowed as the masked rider rode his white horse close to the officers. But those eyes opened with evident interest as they glanced at the silver bullet in the man's hand and widened more as the Lone Ranger finished his story. The latter started to make a broad gesture toward the top of a hill a quarter of a mile away and stopped suddenly. He reached for his field glasses, gazed through them for a second, and then handed them to the captain. If you have any doubt that I speak the truth, Captain, look through these glasses at the top of that hill. Thank you, I'll do that. Ah. Stranger, I was prepared to question your word, but I can't now. You're right. Those Indians are in war regalia. That's merely a scouting band we see up there, Captain. Yes. The main body can't be far behind, though. And that means we can't stop here. Captain, if you can make it, you may find safety in the old territorial... Now, wait. Na- wait, stranger. Yes? I'm not familiar with this country, but I do know the government gave up the territorial fort when Fort Shandon was built. Yes, but it's still standing. Blockhouse and stockade. There's a trail that leads to it back a mile or so. If you'll order your troops to turn around, Captain, I'll lead them there. It'll be hard riding, but I think it's your only chance. You're right. Tex, you heard what we've been saying? Yes, Captain. Kind of. And get your horses turned and prepare to gallop them every inch of the road. Yes, Captain. All right, the rest of you follow me. Right. Ready, Caesar? Yes, Captain. The Indian scouts here turning. They'll ride back to the main band now and be after us in a short time. We'll worry about that part. You lead the way. All right, Captain. Come on, Silver. Come on. The Indians, warned by their scouts of a white men's flight, had set out in galloping pursuit from their ambush at Eagle Rock. But the hard-riding wagon train reached the entrance to the old territorial fort before the pursuing red men came within firing distance. The Indian bullets fell short of the wagons and riders. As led by the Lone Ranger, they thundered through the gates of the stockade that surrounded the deserted but still sturdy territorial fort. The Lone Ranger leaped from his horse in front of the blockhouse. Oh, 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 easy, steady now. As Captain Mumford rode up beside him. Captain, we may be able to hold them off here, but even with this blockhouse and stockade, it's going to be a job. You're right. Men, close those gates and fire them. Fire the gates in the back, too. Lieutenant, stop it. Then get guns and take your places as orders. The Indians are coming, Captain. They're riding close. Right. Captain, I can't get my coach and horses in the stable. It's crowded. What do we do with the money in the baggage compartment? Leave it. It's safe enough there for the time being. Get rifles from the gun wagon for the drivers and passengers. Yes, sir. All right, Slim, pull them this way. I'm coming, Captain. Hey, pull them a time, Slim. 
What about you, Ducky? Don't, don't wait for me, Coleman. Uh, Ducky, Captain. get inside the blockhouse now. Uh, yes, sir, I'll go inside. A great help he is at a time like this. Who is that man, Captain? His face is familiar. The Indians are closing in. All right, men! Don't waste this job! Give it to them! Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you how you do it is a question, and here's one the that happy people have to face. Western champions, for instance. When Bobby Feller takes the mound, the outfield boys sit on the ground. That Wheaties pitching leaves them there, watching batters fan the air. And when we name our Wheaties crew, Big Ted Pazuski's in there, too. He'll face those hurlers day or night and knock their fastballs out of sight. Bob Feller and Ted Pazuski both know that Wheaties magic. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Wheaties Breakfast of Champions. Keep on eating your wheat. And you'll be good to do an okay food. Now to continue. The beleaguered white men, though suffering casualties, held off the encircling Indians throughout the day. When night had fallen, the red men, hauling their dead and wounded under the cover of darkness, withdrew to the hills overlooking the front of the stockade around the blockhouse. Uh, it's almost too much to hope that the Indians won't attack again. They will, at dawn. It's their favorite time. Well, we're more than an hour yet before. Captain Mumford, it's me, Tex, in Coleman. What is it, Tex? Well, outside, Captain, the lieutenant just took in three men, sir. He wants you to see them. Three men? Who are they? Where do they come from? They're two whites and an Indian, Captain. Riding up this way from down Texas. They say they run into an engine patrol in the hills and was chased most of the night. They come riding right up to the stockade gate. We almost let them have it, huh, Colby? Almost. Lucky there was enough light to see they weren't Indians in war dress. They're lying over in the stable, Captain. What's the Indian doing with them? Sort of a scout for the party, I reckon. You'd better come and learn about them yourself, Captain. All right. The Lone Ranger accompanied Captain Mumford and the two men to the stable. Croak, Lucky, and Joe had torn their clothes, dirtied their hands and faces, and were in a pretended state of exhaustion. We, we were lucky, Captain. We almost ran into a whole camp of redskins up there in the hills. And then we seen the fire burning down here in the yard. And... Give me some water. Tex, will you get I some... I have some water here in my canteen. Go ahead. Oh, it's you, Dirky. Uh, yes, sir. Shall I? Yes, yes, go ahead. Give the men some water. Here you are, sir. Yeah. Thanks, mister. What about the other two? Yeah, they're all knocked out. Look at them. We didn't get time to camp last night. I haven't slept in two days. Well, you'd better grab a few winks, then. We'll be needing you and your partners before long, unless I miss my guess. Thanks, Captain. We'll be ready. I'll leave you alone in here, then. Uh, uh, Captain, I... I'll stay here with the men if you like. Perhaps they'll All be... right, all right. Stay in here. We'd better get our men up at the stockades to relieve the guards. Tex, wake up whatever driver's arresting. Yes, Captain. I don't think any of them's asleep. Come on, Colonel. Let's rouse them. You've been our greatest help, sir. Is there anything you wish to suggest before I start giving orders to my men? No, Captain. Only to be on the alert every second. There's something strange about this attack and about what's going on around here. Huh? What do you mean by that? You're carrying merchandise for the settlements in your wagons, I know. But uh, what about that money I've heard you mention? Where is it? The baggage compartment of the stage. Why? It may not be connected in any way with this attack we're under. But there's a new danger inside this stockade. I've seen a face I think I recognize. There is a bandit with us. You can spare a few men. I wish you'd have them stay in the background with me. Twenty minutes passed before Croak Harvey touched Lucky Gilmer and Pawnee Joe on the shoulders. All right, you two, the act's finished. It's time to get going. I just come from outside. The eyes closed was hard. They went for our story, huh? Yeah, I told you they would. You ready, Joe? Yeah. Sure. We start fire now. Give signal for attack. No, not yet. 
Where do we know the road's clear to drive the stage out the back way? The money's in the stage? Yeah, and the horses are in harness, too. All the soldiers are up front, watching out for the engine. Where, boss? He's up for the stage, ready to take off with us. I just left him there. Come along, Lucky. Right. Joe, I'll yell in that window over there. Oh, you're to start the fire to bring the engines down. Yeah, I wait. You'll wait a long time, Pony Joe. Oh, are you Don't wait for that gun. Corporal, disarm that man. Give me that gun, engine. Front oh, no, shoot. Here, gun. You stand back and stall. Hear what we say. Yes, Joe. Right after I told Captain Mumford I recognized you and Lucky Gilmer and Croke Harvey. You escaped from Texas, didn't you? You better tell us everything, Pony Joe. We heard enough just now to suspect that... Stop! Oh, we shot. Someone shot the Indian. It came from that open window. I'm going out there, Captain. The Lone Ranger, gun in hand, sprinted from the stable. The corporal had run towards the side of the building from which the shot had been fired. At that moment, from the back gate, three shots rang out. The Lone Ranger ran to the back and arrived at the stagecoach first. Three figures lay sprawled on the ground in the faint light of the fading stars. Another man stood over them with gun in hand. He was stage passenger Jim Coleman, and he turned as he heard the Lone Ranger. I got them, the dirty money-stealing killers. I got them just as they tried to get into the coach. Coleman, you shot Harvey and Gilmer? You know who they are, eh? Yes, I heard them plotting at the stable window. I shot them and their boss. Their boss? Yeah. Look at him there on the ground beside him. Elmer Ducky, he called himself. Pretending to be a namby-pamby. And all the time it was him who planned having the engines attack the train... While him and his men got away with that hundred thousand dollars in the stagecoach. Oh, yeah. What were the shots? Who were those men on the ground? I heard the shots out here. What's happened? I'll tell you in a minute, Captain, when this man finishes. Go on, Coleman. What else? Well, I heard them planning to light a signal to bring the engines down for an attack, like they planned with the Redskins. Then when I knew they took the bar off the back gate, I ran over here and put it on again. You know who shot Pawnee Joe? Yeah, Dirky the Snake. Killed him because he thought the engine would squeal. Then he ran here to the stagecoach. And him and the other two started to drive out when they saw the bar was over the gate. They got out, but I had them covered. They drew for their guns, but I got them first. I shot them dead, and I'm glad. One of them's not dead. Oh, he's moving. He's a fella turkey. Turkey? Why, that kill... No, you don't, Coleman. Oh, my arm! You shot Coleman! Yes, Captain. Before he could kill Durkey, he wants Durkey dead. Because Durkee is a United States Marshal. What? Why? That namby-pamby Josh is Josh a... Whitley, United States Marshal from the Southwest. I told you today his face looked familiar. Now I place him. He must have been following this Coleman here, knowing he was up to something. Why? Why did you let me tell my story just now? Because I realized suddenly that you were the boss of whom you were speaking. You killed Joe because you thought he'd expose you. You ran here to get away with the money in the coach. You saw Durkee holding your pals Croak and Lucky. Isn't that right? You must have seen it happen. You shot Durkee or Whitley. And then when you saw it was too late to make a getaway, you killed your partners because they might squeal on you too. Then you made yourself the hero of the lying story. Oh, that dirty murdering skunk, let's get a roll. No, you don't, Tex. Corporal, get the doctor and have him attend Durkee. The man must be saved. Yes, Captain. Privates Brady and Loftus. Yes, sir. Take Coleman into the blockhouse. I want to talk to him before the Indians attack. Coleman, afraid of death and pleading for his life, told the whole sordid plan for using the Indians and his attempt to steal the money meant for them. And you turning the wagon train before he got to Eagle Rock was all that kept us from getting the money. It was this masked man who warned us. Coleman, of all the cold-blooded, outrageous plans I've ever heard you... Captain, Captain Mumford. What is it, Tex? The Indians attacking? No, no, they're still up moving. It's in the west, though. Clouds of dust against the sky. It's either a stampede or a herd of horses coming. Captain, it's the soldiers from Fort Shannon. I must get them and stop them from fighting with the Indians. I must get to the Indians. Captain, is that man off his head? Why, they mean... Those Indians, Tex, have been lied to. We don't want to fight them, nor will they want to fight us when they hear what that man has told us. Is that the truth, Captain? You oh, mean it. Doggone the mask, man. Listen. Oh, He's riding away. Going out of here. You hear him? The Lone Ranger got to the troops from Fort Shandon before they made contact with the Indians on the hill. The soldiers stopped as the masked man rode to Colonel Thomas and spoke earnestly. 
A few minutes later, he and Tonto, who had been with the troops, galloped off to the hills. Colonel Thomas gave orders. Men, dismount! At ease. We've sent emissaries to the Indians. It looks as if there'll be no battle after all. Toto had used the signs of peace to get to the Indian chiefs without danger. He and the Lone Ranger, speaking in Indian language, told their story. When the Lone Ranger concluded, Chief Big Moose Bear spoke. Pony Joe lie. What you say is bad thing. Injun glad signal for more fight not come. Me believe what you say. Scouts say soldiers rest and not make ready for fight. We go talk with soldier chiefs now. The sun was high in the sky when the meeting between the Indian and army chiefs ended. Big Moose Bear looked at the money on the table and grunted. Ah, me know now, white man, tell truth. We go back to reservation... When we sign papers, get money like promise. We've had casualties, Captain Mumford. And the dead have been the villains. It could have been so much worse. A terrible tragedy. Yes. Thanks to the masked men, all this has been averted. Oh, where is he, by the way? He left just a few minutes ago, Captain. Him and the engine. Yeah, they sure saved everything, didn't they? But who was the masked one? Why, Tex, you didn't know him? Bet you even the chief knows, huh, Chief? Ah, uh, me know. Him great friend of Indian. Him lone ranger. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.